Okay, well I finished that pass and here it is all ready for the neural. But I wanted to talk a bit about uh, the holding of this work. I, I should have done that uh, in the beginning. You can see I've got quite a big piece hanging out here. Uh, maybe three times the diameter of the stock, which is fine. This is pretty beefy. Uh, since I'm using the scissor type of tool that is, you know, exerting pressure on the top and bottom equally, uh, there's really no need to support this with a, a center in the end of it. Uh, by the way that works. So I don't have a problem with, with chucking it up this way. Now if you're using one of the tools like this that comes in, of course, yes, you want to load this with a center. Uh, and to set this to it, you know, you always you want these neurals to be perfectly perpendicular uh, to the to your work. But you also want this thing, this is called self-centering, but it will still exert a little more pressure on the top or the bottom, depending on how high you have the tool when you're pushing it in there. Uh, so the way to get this equally pressured is you would center it to your work, put it in there, rotate your chuck by hand, and it'll make some marks around here. And you can kind of just look at the depth of them. Uh, and if one of them is too low or too light, you may need to raise it, or if it's the other one, you may need to lower it a little bit to get that pattern uniform and get an equal pressure on it. Uh, like I said, you know, I don't particularly care for this one. It's not just the pressure that it puts on the, the headstock and all the, the parts in the spindle. It's also the pressure that it puts on the, the compound nut when you uh, go to put your cross slide in, not the compound, the cross slide, you know, it puts a lot of wear and tear on that screw and that nut when you're exerting that much force in there. So that's why I don't like those. So now we're ready to set up. This method would be the same for each one. We're going to put on the knurling tool. And like I said, we want it perfectly perpendicular to the part. Uh, there's two ways to do that. If you have enough travel, you can roll it back and try to find a flat spot on the front of your the front face of your chuck and line it up that way. Uh, if I'm doing something this large, I use the end of the work. So I'm just going to loosen this up, wheel this in here and get it pretty close. And I'm just going to center it just like so, lock this down lightly, bring it out, and then put the herd on it. I want this, I want this tool post pretty tight uh, because there's a lot of lateral force, at least pushing this way when you run this back and forth, uh, and it can twist on you. So now we have that in there. We need to set the tool to the work. And this is something I'm just going to have to try to describe. Uh, by the nature of the scissor, it will not be dead top and dead bottom. You'll have it a little hanging over to your side, a little hanging over to my side. So I just get down below it, kind of bring the knurl out to the end, and just get it as close as I can, about like so. Now I'm going to roll this in just a little bit. And I'm not sure if you can see this adjusting nut. Uh, I just have it down finger tight right now. I'm only putting not even a quarter of a turn, maybe a sixteenth of a turn on this. And then I'm just going to roll my chuck around by hand. And a couple of revolutions and look at my pattern. And right there, it already looks good. So I'm going to put a little bit more on it. And when you're doing the knurling, you want the lathe to run pretty slow. So I'm going to put mine in back gear. I do this slow and controlled rather than fast and loose. And I'm going to slow everything way down. I usually don't do it this slow, but I'm going to do it for the video. Okay. Now another thing that you can do, but I do not do, uh, you know, you can knurl with the power feed, 
and set you know your advance of the tool I don't do that I turn the wheel by hand and you know I'm standing here anyway so I might as well be doing something interactive and that way I can really feel uh, how, how it moves across the work and I can adjust my tension and my speed uh, if, if it's going really well I'll try to speed it up turning my hand wheel a little bit to move the carriage a little faster uh, if it sounds like it's bogging and hurting then I'll let off a little bit that way I don't have to mess with trying to find the absolute happy medium for each particular type of work you know this is steel that we're doing a 12L14 obviously on aluminum it's softer and you could go faster with it uh, so trying to remember all that stuff I just do it by hand and I get really good results alright so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to turn it on I'm going to feed back just a little bit to get close to the end of my work and then I'm going to run it down here I'll shut the lathe off I'll put a little more tension on it clean it off put some more oil on it and I'll run back the other way and I'll just go back and forth you know it's it's going to take a little bit so here we go and the last thing I did want to say is don't ever run your neurals off the end of the work you can you can cross the end of the work just a little bit if you want to knurl it all the out to all the way out to the end and I'll do that uh, but don't run them off the end and don't disengage them after you start so here we go Put some oil on it. And I can tell you right now, I am, that is way too slow. I'm going to speed this thing up a little bit. Let's try this. We'll be here for a week and a half looking at that. That's a little better. So now I'm starting to work down the work. You can't see my hand. I'm feeling resistance, then the resistance leaves. And I'm just keeping a steady pressure on it, and I'm rolling down the work. And just for the sake, I, I'm not gonna go all the way to the end. I'll just stop there, just stop it. I'm shutting off the lathe. I'm giving it a little bit more. Turn it back on and I'm rolling back the other way. And after I do this a couple times, I'll go in there with a, a chip brush. You know, and you can probably do this faster, like I said, and you know, just go crazy with your equipment, but you know, I like going slow and easy. 